So first we will see how to draw a chair. So we know that chair is the most stable form of uh, cyclo hexane molecule, which has uh, six CH2 units connected to each other through carbon to carbon single bond. And all carbon atoms of this um, uh, cyclohexane molecule are sp3 hybridized. Each carbon is bonded to two more carbon atoms and it is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Out of two hydrogen atoms, six hydrogen, uh, two hydrogen atoms, uh, uh, one hydrogen is axial and other is called as equatorial. Now let's see these bonds which are perpendicular to the plane of the cyclo chair form of the cyclohexane and these bonds are perpendicular to the plane and such kind of bonds are called axial bonds. So there are total six axial and uh, six equatorial bonds, six axial out of which three are beta at three are alpha. Beta means those which are going in upward direction and alpha means those which are going in downward direction. Alpha and beta bonds are alternate with respect to each other. So if I consider this as a carbon number one, then this beta is going up. The next carbon, you consider this or this, their axial is alpha. Again, we have next carbon with beta axial, then you have alpha axial, then again beta axial. So total, we have six axial bonds, three beta and three alpha. Now, another type of bond with hydrogen is the equatorial bond, which are at the periphery side. Let us see these blue bonds, which are uh, equatorial. Now in equatorial also, there are a total six equatorial bonds, out of which three are beta and three are alpha. So you can see here that this is going in downward direction. This is going in upward direction. This is going again in downward direction. This is going in upward direction. So this is beta, this is alpha, this is beta, this is alpha. I consider any one carbon, then if its axial is going beta, then its equatorial will go alpha. And you take any carbon, you will find that it is proper tetrahedral geometry, sp3 hybridized carbon, so no angular strain and no torsional strain. Highly stable molecule and Consider any carbon in this cyclohexane molecule, it is tetrahedral and has, has uh, actual equatorial bonds along with two CC bonds. So this is how the chair is drawn. If this is my first carbon, then this will be my fourth carbon. Whether I count from back side or I count it from the front side, doesn't make difference. If my this is one and this is four, and I want to show a flip form of this particular cyclohexane molecule. Then in flipping, four will go up and one will come down. So if I'm supposed to draw the flip form of this particular chair, then I have to show the chair in this manner, where now the four bond, uh, four number carbon is up and one number carbon is down. What happens in flipping? In flipping, the actual bond becomes equatorial and equatorial becomes action. For example, in the first number carbon, the red bond, which was actual and going in upward direction, the red bond still going in upward direction, but actual has become equatorial. So if you concentrate on this flip form, you'll find that all those red bonds, which were perpendicular to the plane and um, were actual bonds, now, after flipping, they acquire the equatorial position of the flip form of the chair. And obviously, the equatorial bonds will become axial. But after flipping, the beta remains beta and alpha remains alpha. So you consider take any carbon atom, let's say I take the fourth number carbon, its axial was alpha going in downward direction. You can see the fourth number carbon red bond is still going down but it is equatorial. So when your flipping takes place, 
the axial becomes equatorial, equatorial becomes axial, but alpha remains alpha and beta remains beta. So this is how two chair forms can be written which are related to each other as flip forms of each other. So whenever you will draw a cyclohexane molecule, you will remember that this is how uh, the chair and its flip form will be related. And uh, this is simple your cyclohexane molecule. Each uh, carbon is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Let us consider this particular bond is with hydrogen and this particular bond is also with hydrogen. So like this, we'll show chair and its flip form. Hope it is clear. And now actually we will start with the disubstituted cyclohexane. So how many possibilities are there for the disubstituted cyclohexane? So I can have two substituents. Uh, let's say we are talking about dimethyl cyclohexane. Then both substituents can be at only one carbon. That is first car. Uh, let us call that as a first carbon. Then I'll call that particular molecule as one one dimethyl cyclohexane. Or I can have these two methyl groups adjacent with respect to each other. Then we'll call it as one two dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, if I take uh, disubstituted cyclohexanes, dimethyl cyclohexane, then what I'll find that except uh, one one dimethyl cyclohexane, all other molecules they exist in two forms. They are called as geometrical isomers of each other. For example, cis one two dimethyl cyclohexane is a geometrical isomer of trans 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane. If I draw the, what is cis and what is trans? Cis means both the groups are uh, in the same direction. That means either both are alpha or both are beta. See this dotted line indicates that they are alpha bonds and this wedge line, solid wedge line indicates that they are beta bonds. But if I take, both alpha or both beta, what that indicates that two groups are to the same side of the cyclohexane plane, and therefore it will be called as cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. The relation comes to actual equatorial or equatorial action. How that we will see uh, in the next part. The trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane or any trans molecule will have two substituents. Uh, going in opposite direction, that is one alpha and other is beta. So if my first carbon group is going in downward direction, the next carbon, it will be in upward direction. Or what is other possibility? That first carbon is beta, then the second number will be alpha. What the molecule represent? Trans 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane. The relation comes to equatorial, equatorial, or action. How that we'll see later on. So, like this, how many possibilities are there of a disubstituted cyclohexane? So, you have 1 1 dimethyl, then 1 2, 1 3, then you have 1 4 dimethyl cyclohexane, and uh, this is how planar forms of these molecules will be represented. And what you'll find that each molecule, except the 1 1 dimethyl cyclohexane all exist in geometrical isomeric forms and they will be classified as cis and trans form. So we are going to study each molecule one by one. We are going to talk about their energy calculations the, as well as the optical activity of this molecule. So let us consider the first molecule that is 1 1 dimethyl cyclohexane. This is the planar form of 1,1 dimethyl cyclohexane. As I told you that here both the methyl groups are attached to the same carbon. Obviously, one will be beta and other will be alpha, or one will be actual, another will be equatorial. If I draw a chair form, then this is my actual methyl and this is my equatorial methyl. Actual methyl is going in upward direction, it is beta whereas the equatorial is going in downward direction. If I flip this particular chair, then my first carbon will be over here. And now you can see the beta bond is still beta, 
and action has become equatorial, whereas the alpha equatorial uh, in the flip form becomes alpha axial. So after flipping, the axial has become equatorial and the equatorial has become axial. And this is how I'll show the two forms of 1 1 dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, I need to calculate the energy of these two molecules and see what is the stability order. Are they equally stable or they have differences in their energy? So, what you'll find that it depends upon the butane got, in, got interactions present in that molecule. There is, there is one thumb rule that if you have one axial group, then it will form, uh, it will always have two butane got interactions with the ring bonds. And because of that, the energy will increase by 2 into 0 0.9, that is 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. If I take the first chair, I know there is one axial methyl, and therefore there will be two butane got interactions. The energy will come to 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. Or you select the second chair, the flip form, still there is one actual methyl, and therefore the number of butane got interactions remains same, and therefore energy of both the molecules is same, that is 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. They are equally stable, and therefore we have shown this equilibrium, indicating that this chair and this chair will exist in 50-50 percent. Honestly speaking, there is no difference in this molecule as well as this molecule because both molecules have one axial and one equatorial methyl group. Now, so the, and they are equally stable, they have same butane got interactions, and this is how we represent. Now, if I'm talking about their optical activity, then I need to see is there any chiral center in this molecule? So, what you'll find that all other carbon atoms except first carbon. They are CH2s, so obviously there is no chiral center. And if I come to first number carbon, there are two methyl groups are attached. That means there is no chirality in this molecule. Or in other words, we say that this molecule has highly symmetric molecule, and therefore you will find that this molecule is optically inactive because of plane of symmetry, or there is no chirality in 1 1 dimethyl cyclohexane and therefore it is optically inactive. It does not exist in any geometrical isomeric form. This is the only molecule and this is how we represent. Let's go ahead and talk about the another molecule uh, that is 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. As I told you that it exists in two forms, cis and trans. Let us take, consider cis 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. See, this is how we represent in planar form. As I told you, that cis means both uh, the groups are going in the same direction, either two are alpha or two are beta. And if I want to represent the chair form of the cis 1 2 dimethyl cycle hexane, then this is how I will represent. Now you can see here that first number carbon methyl is alpha, and second number carbon methyl is also alpha. That means both are in the same direction. Or if I consider hydrogen atoms, here hydrogen is beta on the first carbon as well as on the second carbon also. The hydrogen is beta, that means this is cis form of 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. If I find out the relation, the first carbon, which is alpha, is equatorial, and second number carbon, which is alpha, is axial. So the relation is equatorial axial, and after flipping, it becomes axial equatorial. That means on the first carbon, the methyl, which was equatorial, now has become axial in the flip form, whereas in the second number carbon, axial, uh, the alpha bond remains alpha, but it has become equatorial. So this is how the flip form will be written. You can see the fourth number carbon is now at the top, and the first number carbon is at the bottom. So these two chairs are related to each other as flip forms of each other. Then, obviously, we are going to talk about first the energy calculations and see whether they are equally stable or they have difference in their energies. So, first, as I told you, that if you have one axial methyl, then there are two butane got interactions 
One butane gauge interaction increases energy by 0.9 kilocalorie per mole, and therefore there will be two butane gauge, so 2 into 0 0.9, 1.8 kilocalorie per mole. This is what we expect. If I go to flip form, still there is one more action in methyl. That means the butane gauge interactions in the first chair and its flip form are same. So the energies should be same for these two molecules. But it is observed that this molecule has one more additional butane gauge interaction. Now from where this additional butane gauge interaction comes? So if you concentrate on the first and second number carbon, if I draw a human projection of, of, for this first and second carbon, just imagine that this particular methyl will come in the human projection, will acquire position just anti with respect to this actual hydrogen, and they will, these two methyl groups will be at 60 degree angle. If they are at 60 degree angle, there will be one more additional butane gauge interaction. So because one actual methyl is there, we were expecting two butane gauge, but two methyl groups which are adjacent to each other are at 60 degree. Therefore, one more additional butane gauge interaction is there. Total three butane gauge interactions. So the energy is three to 0 0.9, that is 2.7 kilocalorie per mole. Whether I take this chair or this chair, the number of butane gauge interactions are same, that is three, and therefore energy for both the molecules is 2.7 kilocalorie per mole. Now, if I let's talk about its optical activity. What you'll find that if I take first number carbon, it has four different groups attached to first carbon. This is methyl, this is one hydrogen, this is CH2, and this is CH CH3 and then CH2. So what you'll find that first number carbon is a chiral carbon. Similarly, the second number carbon is also chiral because it is attached to four different groups. That means this molecule has two chiral centers and then we expect that it has to be optically active. Along with that, we can find that there is no symmetry in this molecule because one is equatorial, other is axial, so there is no symmetry. But still it is observed that even though cis 1 2 dimethylcyclohexane has two chiral centers and there is no plane of symmetry, still this particular molecule is optically inactive. Why it is optically inactive? The reason is racemization. Now, how the racemization occurs and what happens in this molecule? Let us see that. So, if I draw the cis one, uh, see the cis, this is how the uh, molecule looks like, the, the three dimensional structure of this particular molecule. Uh, so this is the stick form, and this is how the cis. 1, 3, 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. This is ball and stick form. This is the steel dimensional structure of 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane in various forms. So, this is how the chair looks like, and the three dimensional structure can be shown in various ways to understand the bonding between the atoms and the uh, groups attached to this carbon atom. Fine. So, what we were talking about, the chirality in this molecule and what happens in this molecule. So, uh, if I got uh, this particular bond, we can uh, molecule, this is uh, alpha, this is also alpha, these two are methyl, red bond and the blue bond in this chair. So, A1 is one of the cis form of 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane. If I flip this, I get a B1 where now we can see this has gone up and the first carbon has gone down. The beta bond, which was uh, sorry, the methyl group, which was alpha, it is still alpha, but equatorial has become action. Similarly, on the second number carbon, the methyl was alpha, it is still alpha, only the difference that now action has become equatorial. So A1 and B1 are the flip forms of each other. I will draw an imaginary mirror and their mirror images of these two molecules. So if I draw a mirror image of A1, it will look like A2. And if I draw a mirror image of B1, it will look like B2. 
A2 and B2 are related to each other as flip forms of each other. So this is how all these molecules represent cis-1,2 dimethyl cyclic acid. So what you'll find that in this particular molecule, uh, even though it has two chiral centers, it was observed that this compound is still optically inactive. What is the reason? So it was observed that if you check A1 structure, and uh, if I correlate with its B1, which is a flip form, they are related to each other, A1 and B1 are related to each other as mirror images of each other. Similarly, A2 and B2 are related to each other as non-superimposable mirror images of each other. If these two, that is A1, B1 and A2, B2 are non-superimposable mirror images of each other and if their energy is same, then they will form a racemic mixture. So what you'll find at any given time, A1 and B1, they exist in 50-50 percent form and because of that, they form racemic mixture. And due to racemization, you know that racemic mixture is optically inactive. Both the enantiomers are equally stable and therefore form a racemic mixture and therefore cis 12 dimethyl cyclohexane is optically inactive due to formation of non-resolvable GM pair or racemic mixture and therefore this molecule becomes optically inactive. So uh, remember that uh, if you see the B, uh, relation between A2 and B1, they are one and the same. If you give, uh, see the relation between A1 and B2, they are same, but A1 and B1 are related to each other. No doubt they are flip forms of each other, but they are also related to each other as enantiomers. They are related to each other as non superimposable mirror images, and therefore they form a racemic mixture. Therefore, cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane is optically inactive. So, this is how I can show a cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane and its flip form, and due to racemization, it becomes optically inactive. Let us go for the next molecule, sorry, that is your. Uh, The another molecule we are supposed to see is the trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, in trans, as I told you, that um, two groups will be in opposite direction. So you can see this is going down and this is going up. The relation comes diaxial. And after flipping, what you'll find that both become equatorial. See now, this is going down and this is going up. So they are opposite direction. And therefore, it is called as trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, in trans, either it is a diaxial form or it is a di equatorial form. And after looking at this molecule, you can immediately understand since they don't have the same number of actual bond um, methyl groups, their energy will not be same. The molecule uh, trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane where both are actual, will have four butane work interactions and therefore the energy will come to 3.6 kilocalorie per mole. So trans diaxial form of 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane has four butane work interaction and the energy is 3.6 kilocalorie per mole. If I take this, what you'll find that two methyls are equatorial. So uh, they do not have any butane work interaction with the ring bonds. But if I draw a newborn projection again on the first and second number carbon, what you'll find that these two methyl groups, which are by equatorial form, are coming at 60 degree angle and they introduce one butane gauge interaction and therefore di equatorial form, since has one butane gauge interaction, its energy becomes 0.9 kilocalorie per mole. So the diaxial form is less stable as compared to diequatorial form and the diaxial form 
has energy 3.6 kilocalorie per mole whereas dry equatorial form has energy 0.9 kilocalorie per mole so they are not equally stable out of which you will find that the one which has lesser energy will be more stable than the molecule or the form conformal where it has more energy so diequatorial form of trans 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane is highly stable as compared to diaxial form and therefore we do not show equilibrium uh, where we show equilibrium where the more equilibrium lies towards diequatorial form and uh, the percentage of diaxial form will be lesser so this is how the energy calculations for trans 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane will be done so if i consider cis and trans molecules of 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane i'll find that trans 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane diequatorial form is the most stable form whereas trans diaxial 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane is the most unstable form of the 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane the cis has energy around 1. Point, uh, uh, it is 2.7 kilocalorie per mole so it comes in between trans diaxial and trans uh, diequatorial form fine so this is about this is how the three dimensional structure of uh, trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane look like and uh, these are all carbon atoms are tetrahedral and after flipping you can see the one one four is coming up that is going down and this is how the flip form of uh, 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane will be shown. And this is how these two green if are hydrogen atoms. You can see that this is going down and it is also going down. This cis form of 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. And these two are related to each other as flip forms of each other. Now let us talk about the optical activity of trans 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane. What you will find that in trans, again you have two chiral centers. This is how I will draw the first chair, let's say A1. And B1 represent the flip form of A1. If this is an imaginary mirror, then A1 and A2 are related to each other as mirror images, whereas B1 and B2 are related to each other as mirror images. In all these molecules, A1, A2, B1, and B2, they have two chiral centers. And since there is no symmetry in this molecule, they exist in optically active form because of the presence of chirality. So trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane is optically active and exists in diastereomic form are in GL pair, resolvable GL pair. So cis 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane was optically inactive, but trans 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane is optically active molecule. So this is how we show this uh, trans and uh, the flipping, as well as uh, they are related to each other, as uh, M1 and A2 are related to each other and mirror images. B1 and B2 are related to each other as mirror images, and we can show that we know that A1 and B1 uh, they are not equally stable, as well as it is a diequatorial form as A1 and A2, whereas B1 and B2 are diaxial forms of trans 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane, which is optically active. So we can see here that uh, if two are axial. One is going beta, other is going alpha, so this is trans. If two are equatorial, but one is going alpha, other is going beta, that means it is trans. But if one is actual and other is equatorial, you can see here, here both are beta, or you can go for both alpha. So cis is actually equatorial, but trans one two is diaxial or diequatorial. Trans diaxial is the most unstable form, whereas uh, the trans diequatorial is the most stable. 
and this is how we can show the one two di substituted cyclohexane. This is the cis form of one two di cyclohexane, and this is the flip form. You can see R, which was actual, now has become equatorial, and the equatorial has become actual. So this is how we can show the flipping of cis 12 dimethyl cyclohexane. Or it can be R any group, and this is how you will show 12 dimethyl cyclohexane in cis form. This is the transform of 12 di substituted cyclohexane diaxial or diquatorial form. Diquatorial form of trans 12 di substituted cyclohexane is the most stable form, whereas trans diaxial form is the most unstable form of uh, di substituted 12 di substituted cyclohexane. So, with this, we are finished with the 1 1 and 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. In the next video, we will see 1 2, 1 3, and 1 4 dimethyl cyclohexane and uh, we will talk about their energy calculations as well as uh, the optical activity of this molecule. Thank you for watching the video and uh, kindly sub subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you.